I honestly feel like I look like a sexy librarian. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be filming a video that I have wanted to talk about, but really kind of haven't mustered up the courage to talk about it. Before I get into this video, if you guys don't know, I do wear glasses. I do wear contacts when I film. I went on vacation and I happened to have ran out of my last pair of contacts and I was like scrambling around as soon as I got home to like figure out like how I can get them as quickly as possible and honestly it's not working and I don't want to push off filming too much so if you guys don't mind I am going to be filming with my glasses for a couple of days I think. Today what I want to talk about is the big elephant in the room. Why have I not had sexual reassignment surgery? Before we do get into the topic of this video, if you guys are new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to subscribe. Honestly, it's free 99 and it does help me. So click that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. That is also free 99. It's like a package deal. You know, subscribe and like and turn the notifications on. Yeah. So if you guys don't really know anything about me, I do have videos all about my trans, you know, experience and I will, you know, have those listed kind of above this video. So this topic is something that is extremely sensitive to me. If you're trans out there and maybe you're feeling the same way I do and you're conflicted whether you should have gender reassignment surgery or not. These feelings are normal. It's just like when you're going to walk down the aisle and get married, you get cold feet. It's just something you get a little bit nervous about. Before I went and had my boob job back in 2018, I was extremely nervous to go under the knife. I was extremely nervous to go under anesthesia. I have this thing called anxiety and it really does trick my mind into believing some of the strangest and the bizarrest things in the entire world. I was so afraid. My number one concern was that I was not going to wake up from anesthesia, that I was going to die like on the table flatline and I was never going to be able to wake up or I was going to, you know what I mean, be asleep for a really long time, like in a coma or something. The chance of that actually happening is very, very slim. So after I had my breast augmentation, I woke up. I was completely fine. Recovery was fine. I do have a video all about my breast augmentation. I will leave that up there also for you guys to check out. That kind of changed my perception about anesthesia. This surgery is very, very, very in-depth. It is a four to five to six hour surgery. Very in-depth. My boob job was literally 45 minutes at max. The other thing that really scares me about having gender reassignment surgery is practically bleeding out on the table. Again, this is a very big surgery. This is not just a normal boob job or a rhinoplasty or something that's done very, you know, commonly. Being a gender reassignment surgeon is honestly something that's a trend at the current moment. So a lot of doctors are, you know, going and kind of figuring out how to do it and then performing it. And a lot of people are coming out botched. A lot of people are coming out with not being able to, you know, use the bathroom correctly. I have to get a good vibe. I'm really one of those people who believes in vibes. So I have had a consultation and I really do like the doctor. I was planning on going to New York City and having a second consultation, but then the coronavirus hit and everything. And I've been just trying to get my ducks in a row to be able to have surgery as soon as possible. What's really important to me is finding a doctor that you trust and that really understands what your look is going for. So for me, I really want something that looks very cisgender. I want something that looks very normal. That's my biggest fear about having the surgery. Even more, I think, than bleeding out and dying on the table because I think I know that that's a little far-fetched. But my biggest thing is how it's going to look and how it's going to perform. I have my own insecurities as, you know, a transgender woman and dating a heterosexual guy who's only been with cisgender females. So to me, like, I want it to be absolutely perfect. I want him to not be able to tell any different. And I understand that that's going to be a little bit controversial for some people, like thinking that I'm going to have surgery because of my boyfriend. But I've honestly, even before I met, you know, my ex-fiance and stuff like that, like, I was already like planning on getting the surgery done like so it wasn't anything about a boy like it's always been something that I've needed personally I would be lying if I was telling you guys that I didn't want it to look perfect so then like my boyfriend enjoyed it too and I know a couple of people who've went to the surgeon that I'm looking to go into and everyone has said that it is perfectly fine I know someone who has like seen all of them and she's like oh my god no it looks so good I don't want to have to go in for six seven eight surgeries to make my you know vagina look how I want it to look so that's kind of another reason that I've kind of shied away because I feel like I'm like, you know what? My mental health isn't good. So, you know, I can't deal with that right now. Like that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of effort. That's a lot of anxiety. 
that I just am not ready to deal with. So I just have pushed it off for years. I have done a ton of research when it comes to, you know, transitioning, when it comes to surgeries, when it comes to before and afters. I have looked at many doctors that are not even in my area, but I've wanted to see their before and afters. And some of them are frightening. And it's sad to say, and I'm not trying to, you know, shade any doctors. I'm not going to name any names, but I've seen some and heard some horror stories. That is something that makes me nervous because there is a chance for anybody to go into a surgery and it to be botched or it to come out bad or for something to go wrong. Princess Jules, I don't know if you guys know who she is, but she is also a male to female transgender woman and she's documented her transition online and she's talked about her gender reassignment surgery and she recently has talked about how insecure she is of her scars. And that's something I'm also afraid of because under my my boobs, I got um, the incision under there and I do have keloid scars and that's something that I'm not 100% sure if that's how my body heals. I don't know if that's going to be the same scarring that I'm going to have down there, which if that's the case, I'm going to be really anxious about it because I, I'm already a little self-conscious of the ones like underneath my boobs. That one I don't really notice as much is because since my boobs have like dropped, like you don't see it that often. Only when you kind of like lift up your boob, like do you see it? I just want to make sure that, you know, I can enjoy sex because I feel like not that I don't enjoy it now. And I know this is a little bit TMI, so skip ahead if you guys don't want to hear this, but like, it's not that I don't enjoy sex now, but it's definitely not as enjoyable as like, you know, as if like I get to like orgasm too. I just feel like I've had a lot of, you know, mental roadblocks when it comes to gender reassignment surgery. And also, you know, before a doctor will even touch you, there are so many things that you have to do. Laser hair removal. That's first of all expensive and it's time consuming. I have had four, actually I'm going for my fourth laser hair removal session, you know, down there. Um, next week. So I've had four sessions. They recommend, I think, like six to eight, I think. So I'm almost going to be halfway done and it does take some time. They also require you to get two letters from mental health therapists. With all the, you know, anxiety and depression that like the last two years kind of have brought me, I feel like I've kind of used that as my crutch to not, you know, go forward and to not really work through my mental health issues and make it better so then I can have surgery. For the last couple of years, I've just really been giving myself excuse after excuse after excuse. But I mean, to me, they're all valid reasons. And I know that a lot of you guys out there who watch my channel are maybe thinking of gender reassignment surgery or you're not even, you know, on hormones yet, but that's like gender reassignment surgery is your end goal. And once it comes to that time before having surgery, these feelings will probably come up for a lot of you guys too because it is a very irreversible surgery and it's something that I want to make sure that I do right the first time. I know that was a little bit long-winded, but I kind of wanted to, you know, talk about my feelings about, you know, gender reassignment surgery and why I have not had it yet, why it's just kind of been like something in the works, but never really anything done. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I love you guys so much. Do not forget to check out my last video. I will link it right here. Stay on my channel, have a couple laughs, learn a couple makeup techniques, and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye guys.